Let's talk more about uh, what we're seeing in Ohio is Dennis Summers, state veterinarian with the Ohio Department of Agriculture. Dr. Summers, I know that your schedule has been awfully busy ever since uh, this has been detected. What can you tell us about these first cases of highly path avian influenza in the Buckeye State? Oh, hi, Ty. Thanks for having me on here and happy to participate. Um, so, yes, we have been quite busy. We uh, So just kind of as a quick recap, we do have two detections of avian influenza, um, one in Defiance and Ashland County. Uh, one is in a commercial operation. The other one is in a backyard flock. Um, you, we've been working very closely with uh, not only our state association to make sure that we're responding appropriately, uh, but we do have control measures in place on both properties. Uh, we're taking the normal regulatory procedures and the actions that we need to do to ensure that, you know, the virus is contained and we're doing what we need to do to start working through that process, you know, working a lot with our USDA counterparts as well. So we have uh, a lot of people that are dedicated to this effort right now to make sure that, you know, we're we're keeping the virus contained, we're working through our procedures um, and, you know, just trying to make sure that we're devoting all of our resources to their to those efforts right now. I want to talk about that process in a bit, but sure. speaks to really just how good we are at biosecurity in Ohio, because HPAI has been pretty much in all surrounding states of Ohio, and it took us quite a while to see an outbreak here in this state. Yeah, you know, we're not immune from the overhead shower of uh, droppings from wild migratory birds, right? That's something that we've talked about as one of the major, uh, if not the single most important threat to, um, you know, AI transmission into our domestic into our domestic birds. Um, you know, we have a wonderful and strong poultry industry here in Ohio. We are number two in table eggs, and I, I don't need to go into the stats with you, Ty. I'm sure you know them, but we have a very strong, robust, and very proactive poultry association and poultry industry. They do a really good job, and you're right. I think that is a true testament to the fact that we've been able to go this long uh, and have only just one backyard flock. You know, back in March, we had the a uh, small backyard flock here in Franklin, Western Franklin County. But uh, aside from that, you know, those preventive measures that we harp on all the time and we talk about every day, that is being heard and resonated within our poultry sector. So uh, we continue to be very proud of Ohio's poultry industry and the fact that they've been able to maintain um, those biosecurity measures. Look, you know, it's inevitable that, you know, maybe something like this was going to happen. It's unfortunate that it's that it's happening right now. But um, we are a victim of the flyway, the migratory birds, and, um, you know, we'll just kind of work through this and make sure that, you know, we continue to press upon our, 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 our all of our poultry facets, whether that's just the backyard operation with the hobby flock to a large scale producer that, you know, it's important that you have this biosecurity in place and um, try to keep that virus out of your flocks. You and your team have been working around the clock ever since uh, you discovered uh, HPAI in these two counties uh, in Ohio. A lot has to be done in a little bit of time. What is that process? Once a producer flags something is something may be wrong, what are the next steps and, and where are we in that process now? Well, I mean, not to get too granular with it, but basically, you know, they, the, you know, those, those properties noticed something. There's something wasn't right with their birds. You know, there was some, uh, a slight decrease in uh, maybe it was egg production and they saw some morbidity and mortality. And they did what we asked them to do. It's what we asked them to do and the Poultry Association does is, hey, get some samples down here to our diagnostic lab. We need you to engage and get those samples down. And they followed what we asked them to do. And, uh, you know, they they knew something wasn't right uh, on both sites. And they got the samples down and we did our testing and we, and we had that uh, confirmed here at our diagnostic lab and then also by the Federal National Veterinary Services Labs. You know, when that happens, we have to, we have to take our regulatory process of, you know, making sure that that site gets quarantined, um, making sure that we have established knowing what other flocks may be in the control area or surveillance zone. So those are normal regulatory processes. And you're starting to try to gather information. We're very heavy in data gathering and information gathering right now, but we're also addressing stamping out the virus. We need to stamp out the disease, which is not palatable but it's a process that must be done. So we are working through those depopulation and disposal activities on both sites, helping to make sure that we have, you know, the support efforts there. And you're right, we have, we have mobilized a lot of our staff, almost everybody that's, that works under me here, not only just in our field operations and program side, 
but our diagnostic lab here is is uh, you know activated. So we are we are ready to respond. We are doing more testing, and uh, you know we're just trying to work through those efforts of the hard parts of you know depopulation and disposal, and we'll work through that. It's it's not a quick process. We are working with our USDA counterparts. USDA has supplied us an incident management team uh, from the National Veterinary Services Group, which has been helpful. They've come into town here to help us with it. So, you know, again, that's just because of so many logistical things. There's so many things that need to be done uh, that that need to be there to help those those both of those sites that we need that additional federal federal help. So we're we're just kind of going through our boxes and, and working through it and making sure that we keep it contained, make sure the site is biosecure, make sure virus isn't leaving, and making sure that we're not only doing our job, but we're also attentive to what those producers are going through. You know, that's a big part of that is daily conversations, multiple conversations all day long. As you said, it's from six in the morning until eight o'clock at night. It's a phone call or a meeting right now, talking and engaging with those producers to make sure they understand that we are here to help them. We'll help them get going again at some point, but we've got to do a job right now. And, um, you know, they've been wonderful and super cooperative. So, you know, we're very thankful for that, but just trying to be attentive to their needs as well. It's an unfortunate, unfortunate circumstance, but also an opportunity to, again, reiterate to uh, poultry producers across the state uh, what they need to do to protect their birds as we see this outbreak in Ohio now. That's right. The, the key, the, the single most paramount thing is just this heavy attention to, to disease prevention. You know, we talk about terms like biosecurity, and it's a term we throw out all the time, but you've got to have some active thought and preparation for how you're going to keep the virus off of your site and how are you going to keep it contained if it does come on your site. So it's a two way street, but enhanced biosecurity, vigilant disease prevention, you know, making sure you're watching your flock, avoid contact with domestic or um, migratory waterfowl. You know, if you have outdoor birds, bring them inside into a coop, you know, try to make sure you're, you're not getting access there. Wash your hands when you have contact with other poultry. Keep people off. If you have birds, whether you're a commercial operation or a backyard flock, keep visitors to essential personnel only or at minimum, you know, don't let people come onto your property, especially on the commercial operations. You've got to be watching who comes on and off because you don't know where they've been. You don't know if they're washing their boots. You don't know if they're washing their hands, but your biosecurity procedure should be there to help with that. And, uh, you know, the, the other big one is watch your birds, look at your birds, you know, go out. If you see signs of illness and we're talking about chickens, turkeys, domestic birds. I'm not necessarily talking about blue jays and crows and things like that. While that's important, I'm talking about domestic poultry. Look at your birds. If you see signs of morbidity, illness, or dying, you know, pick up the phone and call somebody. If you see something, say something. So we want to be there. We want to be attentive to that. But we do ask that, you know, you are executing those biosecurity principles that we talk about, watching for signs of illness and trying to take those preventive measures. You mentioned how important Ohio agriculture is to the poultry industry. We have a lot of great poultry farmers, uh, table eggs, as you mentioned. Uh, so consumers are going to be having some questions when they hear about this as well. What's your sure. take? Well, first off, our food safety system is secure. You know, we this this is not a food safety risk. This is not going to have a huge impact on any supply chain issues. We are talking about a single premise right now. Um, you know, and the backyard flock was not a was not an egg production site. Uh, you know, continue to do your normal food safety procedures, cook your food, wash your hands, make sure you're cooking your, your, um, your poultry products to 165 degrees. Um, you know, no food, no products from this, any of these sites are going into the food supply. So I want to make sure that our listeners are aware that, you know, that is not something that's going to happen. So they're not going into the food supply. Uh, but, you know, just make sure you're just doing those normal preventive measures from a food safety perspective there. And, uh, you know, our food supply continues to be safe. A multi-pronged approach for Dr. Dennis Summers and the Ohio Department of Agriculture of protecting our farmers, protecting our livestock, and protecting our consumers uh, with the Ohio Department of Agriculture. He is the state veterinarian. Dr. Summers, thanks for your time. Well, thank you, Ty.